Hey, everybody. It is Mary. And today is our fourth and final episode for this month's topic, which has been all about aligned routine. And I have to say, I have absolutely loved this month. I was just telling my Fully Alive Circle members that when I <laughs> created this month, it was a little bit like, oh, I'm going to make up this ru- this uh, word called aligned routine. Turns out everybody is vibing with it. I had a live Q&A with my circle members yesterday and they were just geeking out about this month's topic and we were getting into all kinds of different issues that were coming up for them as they worked through the content for the month and the membership. And man, I mean, it has just been so powerful. I know like the first week we talked about the four different connections of what it means to have an aligned routine where we go up first, we connect to source, then we connect to our our highest self, then we connect to the season of life that we're in, and finally we connect to our emotions. So we make sure our routine feels good. And then Lindsley and I, oh my gosh, we had such a fun conversation. We talked about Enneagram and what it looks like for each Enneagram number to kind of balance out a healthy routine for themselves. And we even got into this whole idea of chronotypes, looking at your biorhythms and your sleep patterns, and really ultimately creating a routine that is in alignment with your instinct, with your nature, with who you are naturally. And then I had Jimmy Jean on last week. And y'all, that was such a beautiful conversation. We talked all about spiritual discipline, this idea of going up first. And what does that look like to kind of approach that in a new, fresh way. So I hope that you have totally enjoyed the past three episodes. And I thought that for today, we would sort of slow down and look at the how of what it looks like to create an aligned routine. And I'm going to put on my like real coaching hat today, (laughs) which is always fun for me. So I'm going to like challenge you a little bit and help you think about things in a new way, because ultimately I want for this idea of consistency, of nourishment, of doing the things that, um, you know, you want to be doing. I want that to actually happen for you. I want to kind of blow past any kind of obstacles or challenges that you might be having and line it up to where you can feel confident in creating an aligned routine for yourself. And so as I've been talking to my Fully Life Circle members, one of the members had a question about getting motivated to do some of the things that they feel like, okay, I've clicked in, I've checked in, like my body's asking for X, Y, Z, and I want to do those things, but I'm not doing it. And y'all, I so get this. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've had that intuitive hit where I know exactly what it is that would replenish me, that would be life-giving to me, that ultimately is the the life that I want to be living and who I want to be in that life. And yet I end up being in this season or this stage or this spot of paralysis where even though I know like, okay, I want to eat different foods or I want to do something in my business or I want to meditate more often or I want to move my body more often or whatever it might be. It's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. That feels good. And yet I've been in seasons and the one-on-one clients that I work with, this is so much of the work that we do. It's like, there's this block. There's something that stands in the way of, Hey, I say I want this and yet I don't know how to get started. I don't know how to be motivated. I don't know how to like get into action and make it happen. And so I wanted to first off kind of start out by talking about this concept of self integrity. I remember that when I was working with my own coach about this issue, I was the queen of backing out of things. So like at the season of my life that I was in, I was feeling so depleted that anytime I committed to anything and I would even tell like my therapist or a friend or a coach or whomever, like, okay, I'm going to start walking today. This is when I was living in a much larger body that I'm in today. Or I just said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it every day. And then I wouldn't do it. And so I can remember sort of being called out on this where I would cancel appointments, cancel kind of that accountability. I would just not respond to people. I was kind of shady, honestly. And 
I was most mostly like more than anything, like shady to myself. Like I was not keeping any of the commitments that I had made with myself. I would say one thing, do another thing. I was lying a lot. And I was essentially out of integrity with myself. This whole idea of self-integrity is so fascinating to me because when we think about integrity, oftentimes we think of it in the context of like having integrity in business or having integrity in our relationships and kind of adhering to a sort of set of ethical behaviors, let's say, where I'm not doing shady stuff. I am like somebody who you can count on. Like I am an integrous person, but a lot of times it's external. Like I'm integrous to other people or in my work environment or in my relationship. But so often we don't really think about what it looks like to be integrous to ourselves. Like how do we have self integrity? And when I think about the the word integrity, it to me is really about sort of having our actions aligned with our values, having our behaviors consistent with the principles that we deem um, ethical and important, and that sort of our li- our lives align with those set of beliefs and values. And it makes sense together. Like, okay, for example, if I uh, have integrity and I believe that, you know, I'm going to be a good person and that is treating other people the way they wanted to be treated uh, or the way I would want to be treated, golden rule, that could be not lying, that could be honest, that could be um, just, you know, all the kinds of things that we think about when we think about values, that my behaviors line up with that, that they're in sync with those set of values. So self-integrity to me is flipping that to the relationship to myself, saying what, sorry, doing what I say I'm going to be doing, like to thine own self be true. I think that was Socrates who said that where we kind of understand, okay, where are my values? So for example, if I say like, hey, I want to move my body, like it's really important for me to listen to my body and a part of my aligned routine, I want to make sure that there's some kind of movement. And again, we talked about a couple weeks ago about changing out that word of exercise or working out that might be triggering, change that out for movement. So I love, I just love the word movement. It feels so much more expansive, but let's say like in order for me to be my best self, to be fully aligned, like if I go up and I connect with source, I connect with myself and I'm going, all right, the best version of myself is somebody who is moving, is flexible, who is strong, who is um, connected with their body. And then you look at my life and I'm not doing any of those things. I don't have a movement practice. I'm not um, stretching my body. I'm not strengthening my body. I'm not m- moving my body on a regular basis. To me, when it's out of alignment, that is a lack of self-integrity. That is, again, there's sort of like a breakdown in the system where it's not in sync anymore. It's out of alignment. And so a huge part of this journey of creating an aligned routine is sticking to an aligned routine, doing what we say we are going to do. And what's so beautiful about this idea of self-integrity is that this creates an unbelievable trust with ourselves, an unbelievable confidence in ourselves. Like so often, part of the issues that we're dealing with is that we kind of go, I know in myself that I'm going to give up at some point. Like I'm going to start this. I'm going to have all the great intentions. I'm going to be like, okay, like we're starting tomorrow and we're going to meditate and journal and read and listen to podcasts and yada, 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 yada. And then it doesn't happen. Like I see this all the time in the courses that I offer or the circle, the fully, fully alive circle membership where like people are all in at the beginning and then it starts to trickle and it starts to trickle and it starts to trickle. And what's so fascinating is it's just, we do this, all of us do this, myself included, is we, we allow ourselves to move out of alignment. We allow ourselves to move out of a place of integrity with ourselves for the things that we have deemed important, that we think that are valuable and necessary in our lives, that we want to have, that we want to cultivate in our lives. And all of a sudden we break trust with ourselves. It's like how often would you hang out with a friend who kept saying that she was going to meet you at lunch and then never showed up like week after week after week after a while you'd stop 
inviting her to lunch. Same kind of thing with ourselves. It's like when we don't have the self-confidence that we'll show up as an advocate for ourselves, we stop trying. We stop the new behavior. We stop getting uncomfortable. We start, we stop trying to create change in our lives because we don't trust that it will be long lasting. We don't trust in ourselves that we will stay consistent. And I hear so often people talking about how they are someone who is just not consistent. Like I'm just not consistent. That is just part of who I am. I'm just not consistent. And I'm like, actually, no, you just have cultivated a, a lack of trust within yourself with yourself. If you trusted yourself, like if you really trusted yourself, you would start something because you knew that you would follow up and you would do it. And this is not something that um, might even come naturally to you. And this is why if we kind of go back to my conversation with Jimmy Jean of last week, this is that self-discipline, self-practice. Like this is the practice part of our work. And the more that we can honor our own word to ourself, the easier it is to do that. The more we feel in violation of ourselves, the more we're in like integrity when we're, when we're not, when we find ourselves breaking that integrity, it's like, Ooh, we can feel it. But when we have become in such a pattern of distrust with ourselves, it's really easy to just be in that state of paralysis and totally check out. So part of the work is being an advocate for yourself. So one of the phrases that I use often is is honoring what you hear when you check in with source and your higher self. So for me, like one of the most important questions I ask myself on a daily basis is slowing down tapping in, putting my hand in my heart and asking myself, what do I need today? What is it that I need today? And I listen and I allow whatever that is that is inspired, that is an intuitive hit to flow through me. And from that place, then I have to honor what I'm receiving. I have to honor the message. I have to honor what myself And God or source or whatever is asking of me for that day. So it's like if I come in and I say, okay, my body really needs more water today. Or if I check in, I go, okay, what is it that I need? I really need rest today. Or I really need to talk to so-and-so. Or I really need to move my body. I really need to stretch my body. I cannot tell you how many times I've done that practice and then I wouldn't honor it. I wouldn't do it. And it breaks trust. It's almost like we have this little person inside of ourselves that is vulnerable enough to state its needs, to ask for what it, what it needs. And then we go, nah, I'm not going to meet those. It's like if your body said, I'm really hungry. And you said, "Mm, that's all right. You'll figure it out. I'm not going to feed you. Like, why would you ever want to share with yourself what you need it? Because on some deep level, there's a belief that happens subconsciously of, I will not meet my own needs. I mean, that's deep. Just think about that for a second. That if your internal self believes that you will not meet your own needs, I mean, number one, it's not even going to ask for what you need. And you're going to be so disassociated and disconnected from your body and your emotions that it's like, ooh, man, that is not a fun place. That's like total misalignment, totally out of alignment. But as we practice this, and again, it's not like a perfectionist thing because it takes work to rebuild trust. You know, I think about when trust is broken in a normal relationship, for example, it's almost like the bank account, if you were to take the analogy of a bank account, is on red. Like you're in the the, the red zone, you're in the deficit, and you've broken trust or somebody's broken trust with you, and over time, that other person has to make deposits into your quote unquote bank account. And it takes a while to get to the place where it's just like not in the red anymore. And all of a sudden it's sort of like, okay, at least you're, you're even. And then it takes even longer to build that trust back up to where you're in the positive. You're in the place where you're putting some money in savings account. Like you, there's an abundance there because you've made consistent deposits over time. And this is the same thing with ourselves. We have to make consistent deposits over time of doing what we say we're going to do, of meeting our needs over and over and over again 
to get ourselves out of the red and to create and cultivate trusts, but trust between ourself and ourself. <laughs> like this is where it looks like being an advocate for yourself. Like, oh, I hear that you need to stop working. I hear you. I'm going to stop working. Oh, I hear that you need to stretch your body. Okay. I'm going to pause and stretch my body. Oh, I hear that you want some more water or some more veggies or whatever it might be, or a massage or getting off screen time or meditating or praying or journaling or whatever it is. Okay. I will do that. I will honor the need. That is to me, self integrity. And Ultimately, a really quick and easy way to do this, and this is sort of like, okay, well, how do I put this into practice? How do I start and begin this kind of process of rebuilding trust that I've broken with myself? And I love this idea, very practical idea of creating a 24-hour plan. Because sometimes I think when we think about routine and we think about having to do something forever, (laughs) you know, like I'm going to have to meditate every single day for the rest of my life. That is a big jump when you have not been in integrity with yourself and there's not a lot of trust built up. And it's to me, people go kicking and screaming like, hell no, I'm not going to do that. That's way too much commitment. But what I find is when we can break it down into small wins easy wins and set yourself up for success, this is where you begin to cultivate that trust in a way that's like doable and easy to do every day that you build up over time. So that's what I like to call creating a 24 hour plan. Now I had to tell you, this is something that I've been practicing myself from a woman named Corinne Crabtree who does, who does this in, um, in context with food and, I had noticed that in myself, like I was out of alignment with how I was eating. Like as I think about the kind of person that I am and what I value in life and as it relates to my relationship to food, I love thinking of myself as somebody who is eating life-giving foods or eating foods that are giving me energy, vitality, that are reducing inflammation in my body, et cetera, et cetera. And what I was finding is that I was like in this pattern of real almost like self-sabotage. And I was eating a lot of foods that were super inflammatory to my body. My skin was breaking out. My stomach was bloated. And it was almost like I was force feeding myself with things that my body was telling me, hey, this hurts me. And I was like, I don't care. I need this. You know, I don't care. This this food is hurting me. I'm going to eat it anyways. And there's a lot to that. It's like a whole other conversation. But one of the things that I started to implement that has been honest to God, life changing for me in rebuilding this trust with myself and easing my way into more consistency is creating a 24 hour plan. So I want to give this to you as an option for your aligned routine. So as if you've been thinking about this idea that you have these things that you want to be doing, but you're not doing them, how do you get motivated? I would encourage you to create a 24 hour plan and it's super, super simple. The idea of a 24 hour plan is you sit down either the night before or the morning of, and you create a plan for the day. Now, when I think about aligned routine, this is going to be elements of your aligned routine. So I think that it would be great if you could do this in the evening before. Now, again, you can do it the morning of, it's no big deal, but I think there's, um, a really beautiful thing because chances are a lot of the things that you'll probably want to add to this are going to be in the morning. So it's great to think about it a little bit more ahead of time. But for me, it's not about like looking at my week and deciding what I'm going to do for the whole week or the whole month or the whole year. This is where I tap in and I make it relevant for the season of life for what I'm going through, what I've got on the calendar. And I ask myself, what is it that I need for the next 24 hours as it relates to my aligned routine? What is it that I need? And the point of a 24-hour routine is to make it completely realistic, completely realistic. So this isn't like setting the bar super, super high for yourself where you list off and you go, okay, I'm going to do journaling. I'm going to do this for 30 minutes. I'm going to uh, work out. I'm going to do up, 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 up. All of a sudden, you've got 10 things on this list three hours later. Like there's no way you can get it done. You want to make this almost like dummy proof, <laughs> you know, like so, so freaking simple that it's almost too simple. Because again, when we're building trust and we're making those deposits, we want this to be oversimplified so that you get success. And over time, little wins and little successes over time 
account for a lot of self-confidence and a lot of self-integrity and practicing doing what we say we're going to do. So this is where we write out, all right, maybe just tomorrow, this is going to be um, 10 minutes of meditation. That's it. 10 minutes. It could be six minutes of meditation, like super, super small. You want to feel on a scale of one to 10 in your, like in, in um, your probability of actually completing what you put on this 24 hour plan, that one being there's no way you're going to do it. 10 being absolutely slam dunk, like 100% that you're like at a level eight in your commitment and confidence to be able to do it. It needs to be that realistic. And so when you write this down, and if you feel like there's something on there that immediately makes you feel like pressured or that just feels like there's no way you can get it done and you start backing off from an eight to like a six or a four, that's when you realize, oh, this isn't realistic. So we need to like dumb it down and make it even sim- more simple and easier for you to complete. Because the goal isn't to come out the gate in a morning routine or an aligned routine, evening routine, whatever, that it's like all or nothing which I know so many of us fall into. The goal is to create incremental change over time. Tony Robbins talks about a two degree shift or two, I think he says two centimeter shift, millimeter, centimeter, degree, whatever. (laughs) The idea here is teeny, teeny, tiny shift. We want to make it so doable. 1% shift, one degree different, two degree different max. So that it's just like, instead of all the way over like tiny progress. And if you think about that, like let's say you make a 1% shift every single day of adding in something to your life that is life-giving, that that brings you back into that soul alignment. Over time, you do that every single day, that's 365% progress. Pretty, pretty amazing, (laughs) you know? But I'm not into making these giant crazy commitments. To me, that, that just reeks of like diet mentality you know, where we have all the best intentions of starting this diet on Monday and then five days in we're face down in a box of donuts. Like it just doesn't work like that. But for lasting change, it's these 1% little shifts. And so a 24 hour plan right out for the next 24 hours, what are you going to do? And then this is where the self-integrity piece comes in of practicing doing what you say you're going to to do. I know I've said that a million times, but I can't tell you how important this is to follow through with, to build that trust, to build that self-confidence. And when you meet resistance, so for example, a couple weeks ago, we talked about the uh, model of BEAR, B-E-A-R, the acronym, beliefs, emotions, actions, results. And that is this self-coaching model. That is how anything gets done. The R is the result. So if we want a new result in our life, then we've got to have a new thought, the belief, a new belief that can generate a new emotion that leads us to a different kind of action to give us a new result. So when we have old thoughts that come up and that are getting in the way of us being in integrity, things that say like, um, Hey, Mary, this is going to be hard. This is going to be really, really hard you know, or I don't really have enough time to do this. Like I know I'm supposed to do a 24 hour plan, but I just, I I don't have time to do it. Or I don't want to start this and then fail because I know I'm just going to feel like crap about myself or the age old, like we mentioned earlier, like I'm not consistent with anything. Um, oftentimes too, there's a conversation, the dialogue, the belief of the, the bear, the belief, which is thinking, that is saying to ourselves, I'm not sure what I'm going to find if I slow down and create this kind of connection between going up to source first, connecting in with my higher self, checking in with my emotions. It's like, I don't know what's going to come up here and I'm scared of it. You might be thinking things like, okay, I, this is just not the season. Like once I finish XYZ, then I will, you know, incorporate this. You might be thinking just doubting questions like, well, I'm not motivated. So how am I going to get motivated to do this? And this is when we go, okay, these are just thoughts. These are just thoughts. It doesn't mean that they're true. And so I think the really important piece of this is when we meet resistance, when we have these thoughts that come up and basically say, hey, I know you wrote this down in your plan, but something else came up. You can't do it. There's no way to do it. This is more important. This is more urgent. Um, Feelings of shame and doubt and all of that. 
we have to remember that these are just old narratives. These are just old stories. They are just sentences in your head and they are not real. And you have the power to change those thoughts in the moment for a new empowering thought. And I love this because it's like, okay, what thoughts am I having around my aligned routine that it's saying that this is going to be really hard? It's going to take a lot of energy that it's going to exhaust me more. Like what narrative is that? Like, are you having that narrative? It's almost like, what is the drama that I'm making up about this story surrounding routine? What's the drama I'm playing into about this is going to be difficult. um, I'm not really good at doing these things, yada, yada, yada. And honestly, y'all, this is where we have to stop believing everything that we think. And ask ourselves, is this true? Do I want this to be true? Is it leading me to the E, to a good feeling that I want? Or is it making me feel shame, fear, anxiety, stress, pressure, obligation? If it's making you, if your thoughts are making you feel any of those kinds of emotions, we got to swap it out. Because I want the emotion that you feel when you think about your aligned routine to be one of relief to be one of peace, to be one of longing, to be one of like, oh, yes, thank you, right? We want to have an emotion that leads us to the action of doing it where we go, okay, I can do what I say I'm going to do. And that's why this is a, a practice of becoming aware of the stories that we're telling ourselves about why we don't like or can't keep up with or follow through with routine, The story of we have to get motivated before we move our bodies. No, you don't. You do not have to be motivated before you move your body. You have to say, or I should say, you have to do what you say you're going to do. And the momentum comes after that. I think that's one of the biggest lies is to believe that we have to be motivated to do anything. I can tell you this, that I'm not always feeling motivated to meditate in the morning Or the other day, like I was sitting about ready to watch a movie with my boyfriend and I suddenly got hit with just this wave of emotion. And I had this moment where I could either check out and watch the movie or I could go journal out what I was feeling, what was coming up, or the thoughts that were rolling around in my head that were causing me to feel triggered and rewrite the story in that moment, like right then and there. And it wasn't the, maybe the easiest choice in the sense that like, sure, it might be easier to watch a movie, but it was like, all right, I've made this commitment of like, I'm going to look at my stuff. I'm going to deal with it in real time. So I don't stuff it down. And so I looked at Bentley and I was like, Hey babe, um, let me go journal for a little bit. And I'm just having some emotions come up and I want to go process this and I'll come back here in you know, 20, 30 minutes and then we can start the movie. And he was like, okay, you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. And I went into my room, I brought my journal out and I definitely felt resistance. Like I was like, maybe I should look at my Instagram. Maybe I should, you know, whatever, check email. And I was like, no, Mary, do what you say you're going to do. Process this, feel it, be present for what is so that you can move beyond it and create a new story. Because what was triggering me wasn't the fact of what had happened. It was the story that I was telling myself about it. That was what was triggering me. So I needed to tell myself a new story. I needed to rework those thoughts. I needed to rework those beliefs. Some of them that were ancient and old. And so when we think about aligned routine, all these old stories are coming up about why we can't, or even the, the, the beliefs, the old beliefs of shoulds and all the pressure that the shoulds create and changing to that, changing that to, I'm choosing this. This is life giving. This is me showing up in advocacy for myself. This is me showing up in love for myself. This is me giving myself what I need and meeting those needs, following through, honoring what's showing up. That I like basically, I'm going to prove to myself over and over and over again that I'm going to show up for myself, that I'm going to be here for myself. And so many of us have gotten into patterns of breaking our word to ourselves. And this is where the spiritual practice kind of pulling it all together is this is where that 24 hour plan is like, will totally set yourself up for success. So I encourage you 
to go grab a new little journal. This is what I did. I got like a one of those small moleskins, not the the big legal size, but like one of the littler ones, littler, smaller, <laughs> um, those ones. And this is my 24 hour journal. And so every night I write out for me, I'm writing out what I'm eating for the next day. Again, totally, totally realistic. Whatever I want to eat, nothing off the list. I'm putting it on that, but it's planned. And then I know that tomorrow I'm going to stick to it. And I'll tell you what, it has reduced so much stress for my life because it's like, okay, I don't have to have decision fatigue of trying to figure out what I'm going to eat every day, or I don't need to wake up in the morning and go, okay, what am I doing for my routine today? Like I've thought about it ahead of time. So then I can just wake up and do it. And it's beautiful. It takes out that, that guessing. It takes out that all the, the stories that are in my head that it's like, okay, well, what am I feeling in the moment? And instead it's like, what would my best self choose? So when I'm doing this ahead of time and creating that 24 hour plan, I'm coming at it from my highest self or the energy of the person that is like literally loving myself to the fullest. That is in total advocacy for me, not the part of me that is in reactive mode or self-sabotage mode or paralysis mode. Like I don't want that person deciding if I'm going to wake up and go to the gym tomorrow. I want the person the night before that knows how resilient, how resourceful, how powerful, how amazing I am. I want that person to be deciding the next 24 hours of my life, not the person necessarily in the moment. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want her, like reactive Mary, calling the shots because 10 out of 10, she's not going to show up for what she needs. She's not going to do the things that are loving She's going to escape. She's going to numb. She's going to cope. She's going to disappear. And that's out of integrity with who I really, really, really want to be. Like, I want to be known to myself as somebody who says, hey, I got your back. I got you. And you are somebody who can do this and show up as her best, highest self. And that's where that amazing 24 hour plan comes into place. So I hope that I know this is like a shorter episode, but I'm hoping that this is like super helpful and breaks it down in a way that is doable. Again, make it realistic. If it doesn't feel realistic, back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up (laughs) and start at like, again, that 1% shift. So y'all thank you for being open to this and for loving this topic. Um, And thank you to all my members for your amazing questions that you had this week on the live Q and a I'm excited because next month on the podcast and in the fully live circle membership, we are getting into the topic of soul renewal. Y'all I'm super pumped about this. It's going to be the perfect lead in to that month's topic because we are getting into what it looks like to rest to set ourselves up for our like water break before we go out and join the marathon again, because it has been a hell of a year. (laughs) And I think that we all need like a water break. So we're going to talk about that for the whole month. If you are in the fully live circle membership, get ready for like a giant permission slip to totally replenish and recharge. It's going to be a a really, really beautiful month. If you're not in the membership, make sure to go sign up for the wait list um, because we will be opening the doors to that soon, which I'm super pumped about. But to to get in the know, make sure you're on the wait list. And that's maryhyatt.com forward slash circle. Get yourself on that wait list. Let's go. And I will see y'all next week. All right.